everyone, welcome back to Pine Hollow Auto Diagnostics. It's late night at the shop. We're working on my own 1996 Mercury Mystique. I'm replacing the original clutch. And uh, right now on the odometer, we have 248,000 miles. So not too bad for the original clutch and the reason for replacement it still drove just fine but intermittently it was hard to shift into gear like from neutral you're standing it was kind of dragging a little bit sometimes it would work fine especially once it warmed up I can't really explain the symptoms uh, here's the pressure plate you know, I've got a few scuff marks on there. A whole bunch of brown dust. Now, I don't know if that's from the actual clutch disc or not. Let's take a look. So, there's the flywheel. And right on the transmission, I, I put the clutch disc back in here. And also, another symptom was under 2000 RPM, it was just rattling. It was kind of like. Rah! And if you wiggle this clutch disc, it certainly sounds to be kind of loose and squeaky and rattly. So I can get this guy out of here again. You guys stay right there. So on this guy, I noticed that the springs, these guys in here, were loose and really, you know, had the potential to make a lot of noise. These big ones seem to be, well, I guess they also could be loose, but these little guys are just flapping in the breeze. Now these are damper springs, so whenever you engage the clutch, the outer disc, you know, turns with the engine, and then this guy, the, on the splines that will turn your input shaft to the transmission and in, in order to avoid a big shock these springs kind of dampen the uh, dampen the action so you can see that it's definitely worn to to the limit you can barely see the transitions there of the uh, actual friction surface and on this side So, right here seems to be a little higher. And the original manufacturer is Saks, made in Germany. And it also has a Motorcraft part number stamped on this guy. I see Motorcraft. Right there. This is the original Ford clutch. Sweet. And also interesting to note that the master cylinder, or the slave cylinder rather, lives right on the transmission. It's right here. The hydraulic line hooks up here, and there's the bleeder. And inside is, well I guess we can just show the new one. It's kind of like this. So the throwout bearing and the slave cylinder is one unit. Now this is uh, a Luke clutch kit. I thought that was the OEM manufacturer but it is made in Germany so we have hope that it will last another 250,000 miles if the car does. And check this out. Here we have even double springs. It's like a big little spring inside a big spring and four identical units. And there. So let's slide this guy on. I'm just curious if it makes the same sound or not or how loose it is on the uh, on the splines on the input shaft. Oh, that's a lot tighter. 
So also with this car, another symptom was it was kind of jerky, almost like a rubber band. If you're in like second gear, just trying to hold a steady speed, you let go, it kind of like boing, boing, boing. Uh, a little annoying, <laughs> but you know, still perfectly drivable. And uh, what else did it do? Also, the clutch feel was weird. You almost have to let go. You know, you let go and then it engages on its own, even though your foot is in the in one position. And then to disengage, you have to kind of push further in. It almost had like a hysteresis effect. That's one of my favorite words. So, yeah, I decided it was time before the winter. You already got the snow tires and everything. Might as well give the car kind of a treat and replace this clutch. Now this car, it is not as easy as a Subaru. This calls for like a 10 hour labor time. You have to drop the subframe. You can't take it out the top. There's you know no room. You kind of tilt the engine down. The subframe, <laughs> it's a, uh, well, I didn't disconnect the power steering lines and uh, I didn't disconnect this right control arm on the ball joint actually helps it you know hanging it's whatever happy place there so there's almost no weight on this jack stand right now uh, the other thing I was gonna do meanwhile while the uh, subframe is down is replace the oil pan gasket it's leaking all the way around and annoyingly it's dripping onto the exhaust pipe right here where the clamp is and just burning off and making a lot of bad smells even though the engine itself does not burn a drop of oil because the uh, original owners took very good care of it they used synthetic oil so that's a testament of maintenance matters I mean this is it's just a standard 2 liter Z-Tech engine um, every 5,000 miles I think they just did synthetic oil and it still runs pretty much as good as the day it came off the, the factory floor so yeah just a quick little update for uh, in case you guys are interested in old cars I love keeping them alive and you know replacing this guy uh, it'll be a treat to drive because it, it was getting kind of annoying you know if you're at a stoplight and you're trying to get into gear sometimes it wouldn't go shut the engine off put in gear turn it back on and on your way so this guy has served faithfully for you know since what 20 21 years now 96 2006 2017 but it's time time for some improvements I guess these springs just got tired all right um, I don't know if I'll show a couple of uh, installation steps but kind of excited to get this car back to its former glory Thanks for watching, and uh, stay tuned for updates. So I got the old slave cylinder off, off of the transmission. This guy right here, stamped 95 for the 96 model year. It comes with the input shaft seal, which is kind of interesting. So the input shaft seal is built right into the slave cylinder. So right now, a little bit of oil leaked out right there. And the shaft is, you know, the bearings are good. Everything is ready to be put back together. And I'm just seeing, you know, the wear and tear on this thing at 250,000 miles. Yeah, the bearing, it's a little rough. But nothing, you know, it's still serviceable. Obviously, we're putting a new one on. And I'm comparing these two. This one's looks like aluminum housing, and the new one's plastic. That's kind of, yeah, you know, it's it's kind of a weird design. You know, there's no clutch fork. There's no external slave cylinder. You know, mounted on the bell housing. It's all right here, right on the input shaft. So that's kind of a European design. You see the bearing here, the whole thing spins, and here it's only the inner ring. So there you go, we're going to install this guy. And on this one, the uh, the bleeder is kind of neat. 
when you turn it 180 degrees, it's open. You turn it back, it's closed. But to bleed this thing, and you put fluid in here, and this guy is supposed to fill up, but there's only one pipe in here. So does it kind of just bubble out of the bleed nipple? Do you have to pump it a few times? I'm not exactly sure. Yeah, this one has kind of a double pipe. It fills it through one and bleeds the air, you know, out of the bleed nipple there. This one's a different design, but it should still work just fine. So weirdly enough, the new slave cylinder does not come with this outer o-ring that was kind of glued to the old one. So the case has to seal to the cylinder and then this uh, inner oil seal prevents oil uh, from migrating down input shaft. So if this is missing, the oil will just leak right, you know, between the case and the new slave cylinder. So we have to transfer this O-ring. I don't know why they didn't, they didn't provide a new one. And it's kind of a loose fit on here, so I'm just going to smear it with some uh, great RTV. Some Permatex. Gray, ultra gray gasket maker. Hopefully this will help because I was just gonna pop it on. I'm like, well, it definitely needs needs a seal. I don't know why they don't provide you with one. I think they should. It's kind of a critical component to prevent you know <laughs> oil spewing everywhere inside your clutch bell housing all right here goes nothing a ring is glued to the back here slip this little guy on and All right, three little eight millimeter screws here. I'm actually excited to drive this thing after the new clutch, see what the difference is. Happy with that. Looks like it's uh, doing its thing. Airtight. So now we have to put on our new clutch disc and pressure plate. Work that guy to spec, use a special tool, alignment tool, and hopefully this guy will spline right in. We'll lube everything up. Should be good to go. I ran into a little roadblock here on the Mystique. The starter, one of the starter bolts snapped right off of here when I took it off of the bell housing. So there's three bolts, I'm like, well, you know, two might be enough, but I want to try to get this guy out. So, it's a steel bolt in an aluminum housing. How do we get this out? Well, what I'm going to try to do first is just heat this bolt with an oxyacetylene torch in a low flame. And just try to expand it and then maybe spray it with water, try to cool it down and see if just the expansion and contraction will break this um, bond in here. And then what we can do is either put some vice grips on here, try to spin it out, or 
put a nut on here, weld it on, and then use a wrench to get it out. I already found a replacement bolt. It's an M10 by 1.5. This is one of the original bolts. See, it uh, spins right in here. So let's try get the torch, heat this guy up, and see if we can get it out. So I'm using this uh, D DHC 2000 Cobra torch, and it's just oxyacetylene, but it runs on low pressure. So the Feed pressure for the torch is uh, a little over 5 psi and it uses like a quarter of the gas of a regular torch and the flame is actually a really fine fine flame. You can heat just the bolt and not like burn up the whole starter. So I'm going to put it on. It'll get red hot real quick. Do it from the other side. Kind of shock it, and then hopefully, here comes sweet. That wasn't too bad. Then we can just take our Scotty Kilmer pliers. These guys, and they, uh, once the bolt is loose, you should be able to get out of there. Put a little coil on there or something. Still being a little, a little stubborn. Try regular screw extractor. One of uh, these guys, the Craftsman, they work actually very well. And if it bites, get a socket on here. See if we can spin it out. So let's try this number four extractor on here. Very well. Bingo. Sweet. We'll clean that hole up. We run this guy through with some little coil. Should be good to go. All right, we got the clutch in. Now I got the oil pan off while the subframe is still lowered. 
uh, on this car, <laughs> if you're just doing the oil pan, yeah, it's a lot of work. But if we uh, group it together with the clutch job, not bad at all. So this gasket here is completely flattened, and even if you tighten the bolts, there's no more room to compress it. It's you know completely flattened in its groove. It was leaking all the way around, dripping on the exhaust pipe, making lots of uh, kind of oil smoke that would get sucked into the into the HVAC, and it's kind of embarrassing, you know. I want to bring my wife somewhere in my classy Mercury Mystique. I don't want it to smell like burning oil inside the <laughs> inside the cabin. So we compare new gasket here. Got a Felpro replacement. I've had pretty good luck with Felpro gaskets, so I use them whenever they're available. Now this guy should sit in here and very very nicely. And you see how much it protrudes above the level of the uh, oil pan. And hopefully this is silicone. I don't know if this is, uh, oh, let's see here, made in the United States. 2.0 liter dual overhead cam. Doesn't really say what it's made out of but it's blue, so hopefully it's like silicone based. But it definitely has, you know, six up like a few millimeters, so hopefully that'll be good. We'll RTV this guy, slap her back together, and hopefully we'll have get this car back on the road sooner than later. All right, wrapping up this Mercury Mystique clutch swap. The last thing we have to do is add a little fluid to the transmission. Since, uh, you know, when I took the axle shafts out, maybe a half a quart spilled out. So this is the stuff that the previous owner used. Royal Purple Synthetic Synchromax. And with this stuff, it shifts so smooth that you know, it just feels like it works really well. It's not cheap, but you know it's kind of like a lifetime fluid. If you change it once every 100,000 miles, you're not going to break the bank. This stuff is actually purple, believe it or not. So what I'm going to do is just add it to this funnel and there's a hose that goes down to the transmission. I'm just going to watch it start to drip down here. So I already uh, actually started the car up, shifted the gears. The clutch feels super light, but it works really well. So I guess that's how it was when it was new. I mean, the lightest clutch I've ever felt. So we'll take it on a test drive, see how it works. Cross your fingers. Otherwise, this car has been uh, really fun, fun to drive. It's you know it gets in the high 20s, almost 30 miles to the gallon. Um, I've had it since March, so I've put about 7,000 miles on it. Uh, I just love driving it. You know, it's, uh, it's a lot more fun than the XL7. If, if the roads are in good condition, uh, you know, you can just blast the highway and the back roads and whatever. Handles really well. I've been really happy with it so far. And for 500 bucks, um, yeah, uh, I'm just gonna keep putting money into it if it needs it. But for the previous owner, he said it was really reliable except for the coolant hoses bursting from age and the water pump seizing up which I replaced a couple years ago. 
and we are not dripping quite yet let's add a little more it's it almost looks black but it's actually purple I don't know why they uh, color that way just to be special I guess It purrs. Let's take it for a spin. How do we want to set the camera up here? On the armrest. You can see some uh, gear shifting action. Super smooth. This is the lightest clutch I've ever felt. It's actually a lot smoother than any SUV or van on a rough road like this. It kind of floats, absorbs everything pretty quiet. I don't hear the annoying rattle anymore. You gotta reset the head unit. My wife was making fun of this car because it rattles so loud and uh, now I'll take it for a spin and <laughs> maybe uh, she'll change her mind. Uh, it also smelled like burning oil from that leaking oil pan gasket so hopefully that's solved for a good long time too. It's always uh, exciting to test drive something, especially your own vehicle. And it's definitely not as jerky anymore. There's no rubber band effect. <clears throat> you know, after getting used to a quirk of a car that, you know, like, oh, I'll fix it eventually when it gets really annoying, and you get so used to it that now it's gonna feel like a completely different car. Like the clutch literally takes almost no effort to, to push and the gears engage real well. Let's see how it grabs. breaking the new clutch, right? Gear shift is uh, pretty classy with the fake leather boot. <laughs> and we're in overdrive. Very, very smooth. Awesome. It literally drives like a new car at 250,000 miles. So Ford did something right. I'm not a Ford guy, but you know, this is uh, quite the upgrade from the Geo Prism B 
beater that my friend uh, gave to me, I sold that. And uh, then the Saturn I sold too. I had a choice of keeping this thing or the Saturn, and um, Saturn was worth you know three times as much on the blue book value, but it was just a coupe and it was like rattly and harsh and burned oil and stuff. Uh, this is a lot more car for the money, but I think, you know, these kind of have a bad reputation uh, just for being unreliable or crappy, you know, just falling apart, but I think if you take care of it, uh, any car should serve you well. Uh, that's really my opinion. I mean, some cars are obviously put together a little better, but, you know, this is a one owner high mileage vehicle and it's, it's really pleasant. So I'm going to go around the block here and I uh, appreciate you guys watching. I know it wasn't the full 10 hour, you know, five part clutch series, but um, yeah, I just uh, wanted to show you a couple neat things with the, the clutch disc and how the pressure plate it works and what happens to the clutch disc they don't they don't always wear out and start slipping uh, they, they can also have other issues like with the loose springs and um, just you know the master cylinder I guess was getting tired too but anyways uh, thanks for watching I'll see you next time bye bye